Melinda, I see a lot of equipment here. Do I actually need all of this? It depends on the recipe that you're doing. But let's go through the items that we have here, mm -hmm. and then we'll decide whether you're using a water bath canner or a pressure canner. Okay. The first thing we're going to start with is the jar. Most often, the recipe are going to call for a quart or a pint. We have wide mouth and regular mouth. Okay. So it depends on what you're canning mm -hmm. as to which one you really like. If I'm doing pears mm -hmm. or peaches, layering them in the jar, it's a little easier to get my hand in there. Do I have to buy my jars all the time? Well, you can pick them up at yard sales or other places as well. But what you need to do is to make sure that the rim is nice and smooth. So take your finger and run it around the top and make sure mm -hmm. there's no nicks or cracks that might cause it not to seal. Okay. Okay. This is a half gallon. You're only going to use a jar this size if you're canning juice. That's okay. the only recipe that you're going to find. Mm -hmm. Right now, there's a lot of decorative jars that are out there, but I can't use those. They're not tempered glass. They're not going to hold. And sometimes you may have in your kitchen, you know, like those mayonnaise jars or pickle jars. Those are one-time use jars. I can't use those in a water bath or a pressure canning setting. So what about the lids? It looks like there's two different parts to it. There are. This is called a ring band. Mm -hmm. This I can use year after year. This is called the flat lid, and I'm going to need a new one of these with every recipe that I make. So if I buy new jars, or if mm -hmm. I buy my jars at the grocery store, mm -hmm. or at the yard sale, do I need to do anything special to them? Essentially, before I start my recipe, I just need to make sure that they're really clean. If your recipe is like for jams and jellies, and I'm not going to be processing for 10 minutes or more, mm -hmm. then I need to sterilize them by putting them into a larger pot of boiling water and boiling them for 10 minutes. And I only need to do that if it's a short processing time of less than 10 minutes. Correct. This is a funnel. Mm -hmm. You probably have one that might work, but they make special funnels that fit right down in the canning jars. If you're a really neat cook, you probably don't need one of those. But if you're like me, I really like a funnel to be able to get my product to down in the jars. Mm -hmm. And that also keeps the rim up here nice and clean. The other thing that I need to do is to make sure that once my product is down in this jar, mm -hmm. I'm going to get all of the bubbles out of there. So let's say I'm doing applesauce or cream corn or something that could be an easy place for air to form pockets. I want to use an item to be able to get all of the bubbles out of there. Mm -hmm. This product is called a bubble remover, so I can take it down the sides and make sure that all of those bubbles are gone. And I'm using plastic because I don't want to use metal and etch the inside of the jar. Remember, these are going to last for a long time. On the other side of this, you'll notice it looks like stair steps. Each one of these steps are a quarter inch. Mm -hmm. If I say I need a half inch headspace, I can place this on the rim of the jar and know that the top of the food comes to the bottom of this tool. If I need an inch headspace, it's all the way down there. So okay. you have to read your recipe, know what the headspace is, mm -hmm. and then be able to measure. This is called a jar lifter. And so I place the item like so. I can grip it on top, mm -hmm. and I want to be very careful to keep it level as I move it to one of the canners to be able to process it. Then as I remove it, take it out of there, I want to make sure that I have a solid surface. Notice if we've got a hard countertop like this, I don't want it to go on something really cold. Remember I said they were really, really hot. Mm -hmm. So whether I have a, a drying mat, a dish towel, bath towels, cutting board, whatever your preference is, but I can set it here to allow them to cool. All right, so we're almost done, but what's left? Well, we have this really nice timer. So whether you use your stove timer, your microwave timer, making sure that we follow the times in the recipes are what's mm -hmm. really important. Okay, so this last one, this is a ladle. I know what this is. And I'm assuming I would use the ladle to put the food in the jars. Yeah, that was back there with, with the funnel. or without the funnel. <laughs> When you're um, talking about being a neat cook, yes. Okay. This is where the funnel would come in very handy. Have you seen one of these before? I have. My grandma had one. Okay. And do you remember what she made in those? 
She canned peaches, a okay. lot of peaches. Okay, called a water bath canner. So when I am processing my jars, either pints mm -hmm. or quarts, I can place them in the wire rack that's in here, be able to have water one to two inches over the top, place it on my range, and be able to process. If I want a can though, and I don't have one of those, is there anything else I can use? Well, many times as people are getting started and you think that, you know, that does seven quarts or nine pints and yeah, I don't know that I have that much to be able to process. What you can use is a smaller item that looks like this. Soup pots, corn pots work very well. And what we can do is there's this little basket that is plastic mm -hmm. and with hot water it becomes very pliable. But here I can do three pints at a time. So that might fit family sizes, it might fit if I'm trying a new recipe and I don't know if I want that quantity. I can use any pot with this discovery basket is what it's called, mm -hmm. as long as I can put one to two inches of water over the top. I can use this for any of my water bath recipes. This basket then, is this similar to the rack that's in the other canner? Correct. So I don't need a rack, this serves as my rack. That serves as your rack. And it's also serving as my jar lifter. <laughs> you don't have to use a jar lifter, the handle stays right there? Correct. Okay. So I can take that's... the whole thing out and set it on my drying rack. That sounds like a pretty good way to get started. Uh, if you're experimenting, or just getting started, it's a really good place to start. So let's talk a little bit more about pressure canners. There are three different kinds that are available. Ones that have this little thing that's called a dial, a dial gauge, mm -hmm. all right? And I can see the numbers that as I'm processing my food, I can actually watch the pressure build. This is called a Presto canner. I have a canner like this, that has the dial gauge on here, mm -hmm. but it also has a weight. Okay. Okay, so I can watch the pressure build just like I can in this one, but I can also have the weight. So I see, and what the weight does is when I reach the proper um, pressure, this jiggles so I can hear it. Okay. Okay, so it's like that added security. Yes, I can see it, but I can also, here when it reaches pressure. Mm -hmm. The third kind of canner that we have is called a Miro. The newer Miros look like this. They have the different weights that are like this. Okay. Okay. The older Miros are going to have a weight that looks very similar to this one. Okay. So if the, on the this brand, I see it has numbers, so I know what the pressure is that's in the canner. Correct. How do I know with that what pressure is in the canner? On this little disc, you will see the numbers 5, 10, and 15. Mm -hmm. So whatever my recipe calls for, after I have got my canner hot and I vented it, I've let steam come out of the vent pipe for 10 minutes, then I'm going to place the weight on the vent pipe for the appropriate pressure. Okay, so I have all three pressures on this circle weight, but on this one, I have to pick which weight. Correct, to be able to go on there. And this one doesn't jiggle quite like this one. You don't hear it quite as well. It, it spins, so you just know you've reached pressure at that point. So here are a few things that you might like to pay attention to. Make sure it has this piece, a pressure regulator, that goes over this vent pipe, mm -hmm. okay? When I look on the inside of the canner, I want to make sure that it has a rack. You can purchase racks separate, but I've got to have a rack for the canner to function properly. So this one has a rack, the weighted, the, the water bath canner had a rack, and we had a rack with the green basket. Correct. It's all the same, just a different canner unit. Correct. All of them come with their own racks, all right? On the inside of the lid, we have a rubber gasket, okay? Mm -hmm. Ideally, I want that gasket to be nice and tight. I don't wanna be able to take a hold of it and spin it. If it is loose, it's gonna make it really hard to put on the pot to be able to bring it to pressure. This little item is called an overpressure plug. And mm -hmm. I wanna make sure that it's nice and soft and pliable. 
so that if anything should happen with the canner, this little piece is gonna pop right out. That's the safety feature that the canners now have. And so we have an overpressure on this one, and I see one there. This one looks a little different though. It is a little different. It's not as soft, but it has a melt point so that if the canner gets too hot, this is going to melt and allow the steam to escape. Okay. So yeah. when we're looking at different features, the Presto has the gasket. Mm -hmm. The Miro also has a gasket on the inside. One of the advantages of the All-American is that there is no gasket that you have to replace down the road. This is just a metal-to-metal -metal surface. So it really just depends upon what your preference might be. Do you like to watch it? Do you like to watch and have the security of listening as well? Or do I just like to listen for the type of canner that you might choose to be able to process your foods? Something that I should mention, that if you choose to use a gauge, is that the recommendation is that you have them calibrated every year. You can contact your local extension office for that kind of information. So remind me again, how do I know if I need a pressure canner or if I need a water bath canner? Well, it just depends on the recipe that you're going to be using. Anything that is low acid, I've got to be able to use a pressure canner to make sure that I get the temperature high enough to be able to kill that bacteria that can be very dangerous to my family.